Okay, well welcome to a short primer on the AST1002 star project. Now each of you have been assigned your own star. I have a list of 25 of the brightest stars in the sky and I've assigned each of you one. That's listed on D2L right in the content page. So your first thing is go find out what star you've been, been assigned. Now what your, what your task is, is to apply the things that we're learning in the course to your specific star. Now are there six things that, I, that, I, that the project asks you to, to, to report on? Now <laughs> first of all I guess I should say is there is no prescribed format for this report. You can make a video, you can make a PowerPoint, you can, you can write it up just like a regular written report. Okay? Um, something else, make a web page. I, you know, I'm the, I leave it for your creativity Okay, and I do, do, do encourage and I will give you uh, extra credit uh, for extra obvious creativity in reporting. <coughs> so, there are six things. I'll just briefly talk about each one and, and that'll be it for this, this short primer. First one, so there are six sections. Clearly identify the six sections in, in whatever you do so that I know that you've addressed each one of them. Don't blur it all together because I have to go hunt. And if I miss it, then you'll get a lower grade and there's no, no sense for that. Okay, so the distance, the location, the names, and the magnitude of your star. That all should be in there. There might be other names of it and so forth. Uh, you'll learn about what that means, what the magnitude is, okay? Those are things you can look up. Now, you will find all this information on your, in the textbook. Okay, you're going to have to go look on the internet somewhere. Usually, just typing in this name of your star and you'll find plenty of information. There are some good websites. If you still strike out and can't figure it out, can't, don't know how to use Google, let me know, and I, I will point you in, in, uh, in the right direction. Next is your star story. Every star has a story. It's usually where back in antiquity did some cultures, um, you know, did they, they pray to that star. They thought that was their god or something. Some countries have that star emblazoned on their flag, their national emblem, okay? That's what I'm looking for, okay? The classification, the, the stars classification, which you're going to learn about. You probably don't know about that yet. Okay, discuss the specific spectra of your star, and you're going to learn more about that. What does that mean? So don't worry about that. The HR diagram. Okay, you're going to learn all about the HR. That's like that's equivalent to the periodic chart for a chemist. That's what an astronomer uses. Okay, you're going to have to know about that for the tests and so forth. And this is just a way to help you figure out where on that HR diagram does your star fit. You should be able to figure that out. Okay, uh, the lifetime. You know, how old is your star? How long is it going to live? You know, is it is it a short? There are stars that only live for millions of years, and there's some that live for trillions. Okay, our sun lives for billions. It's in the middle. So uh, each of you, none of you have our sun. Okay, you all have a different star than that. So I want you to figure that out and, and, and get a good estimate. And you'll you might get conflicting information. Show your sources. If you get to, you know get an information, show where you got it from or list it at the bottom. That that's worth some points right there. And the last part is the possibility of life. I'd like for you to comment on the possibility, and if there was life, if there was a planet around your star, how about go, what would you want to say to them or send to them, or should we explore that? So that, there's really not a right or wrong answer other than if you don't do anything, that's wrong. But as long as you put some thought into it, okay, if a star is really, really far away, you know, probably sending spacemen, sending astronauts to it is not the right kind of thing to do because they'll be dead well before they ever get there. So, let's see here. Um, then there's a scoring rubric. Uh, if you, there's a one-page summary. Uh, they explain, here, I'll just, I have it right here. I'm going to pull this off. All right? You can print this off right off of D2L. That's the, everything I just told you about. Here's the rubric, how you get points, okay? 60 points if all items are included. So if you talk about all six items, you get, however you do it now, not, doesn't have to be typed up. Okay. You get 20 points if it's neatly and coherently put together in whatever format you use. If it's slopped together, you know, and I have to sort of hunt and pick and figure out what you're trying to say, that won't be, or if you do it with, on pencil, you know, or crayon, that's not going to be worth as much points. Okay. You get 10 points. This is pretty easy. Communication is presented clearly and effectively, however you communicate. You get 10 points if you cite your references. So you really... You know, you're going to lose 10 points, a whole letter grade, by not putting the reference. And obviously, you're going to look up stuff, so just write down, where did you find it? Okay? 
And I'll look, here's the, here's the kicker here. Up to 25 points extra credit if especially well done and evidence of thought that goes beyond the stated objectives, okay, and for creativity. So if, if you put some time and effort into this, you could actually get 125 out of 100 points. Real good booster to your score. Now, here's the other kicker number two. I'll give you 10 bonus points if you turn it in before one week early. You look on when it's due, okay? I believe it's due at week nine, so uh, if you turn it in before the end of week eight, check on, on the schedule on the last page of the syllabus. But uh, you could actually get quite a few bonus points or extra credit if you do a good job on this. If you just slap it together and it meets the things, fine, you'll get you'll get probably get your near most credit as long as you've addressed all those things. So have fun. I think this is a good way for you to apply what you're learning. It's one thing to learn about the, the size of stars and what affects that in their age, but this is how it's applied. So it really it will help you understand the material that you have to know for the test. So good luck and I look forward to seeing your projects.